Did you know that Unreal Engine actually has a lot of plugins built in that might not be enabled by default, but really can help you do your stuff? If you want to enable any of these plugins, you just go up to Edit and then Plugins. And then here, without needing to download anything, you can enable a bunch of little things. All of experimental features will be featured here as experimental plugins as well. But today, I want to take you through five either very useful or just kind of interesting plugins that you might not have known about. Starting off with the Actor Palette. What Actor Palette allows you to do is in your Tools tab over here, you can have a handful of Actor Palette windows. And when you make one of these, it just adds a new window to your workspace. And you can choose a level to open and you can pick actors from that. So you would make a palette level. I'm just going to pick this uh, test level that I have for my own game as an example. And it just gives you a very simple instance of that level. And then you can click on any actor in there and drag it into your real level. In this case, obviously, these two are the exact same level. But if I go into my actual gameplay levels uh, for my game here, what I can do is I can just kind of drag and drop these things right into this level. Right now, I'm actually putting them in the wrong streaming level, but you can have a handful of different actor palette windows all at once active. As you could see uh, before, we had actor palette one through four, all of which can have their own levels displaying, meaning that you can have a bunch of easy levels to pick actors from to place them while designing your game. It's a very straightforward, but very useful and powerful little plugin that you might not have known about before. The next one is 3D text, which does simply what you expect it to do. It adds a 3D text component and actor. So if I just look for text, we have the normal text render actor, which you might be familiar with. This just adds a 3D version of that text renderer, which has, well, 3D model depth, which allowing you to do a bunch more uh, little things. It just has normal text stuff like fonts and all that kind of stuff, horizontal, vertical alignment, uh, but then it has this geometry tab as well, where we can extrude it more or less, depending on what we want. We can give it a bit of a bevel, set the bevel type to whatever uh, we want, so we can make it uh, stepped, so it feels a little bit more blocky, for instance. We can give the bevel a amount of segments, just what you're used to when modeling this text. But you can do it entirely in engine, just in real time like this. You don't need to tab out into Blender to make any 3D text. Unreal actually lets you do that fairly easily yourself. We even have a couple of presets for the different colors. For the front, we have one color. And then for the back, we have a different color. So going to the back here, you can see that's that pink color. Uh, the extrude, we can make a specific color, and then the bevel also has a color of its own. So you can mix and match these colors to create uh, text that looks however you really wanted to. Now, this one actually is enabled by default, but a lot of people don't end up using this at all because they don't see Unreal as an engine that you use to make 2D games. And while there certainly are engines that are more geared toward 2D specifically, Unreal very much can allow you to do 2D stuff with the Paper 2D plugin. So this is a plugin that allows you to make sprites and sprite maps and all that good stuff. So if we look for sprite, we can make this Paper 2D sprite. And a sprite is effectively just a texture that we give into it that then gets treated as a sprite by the Paper 2D plugin then sprites can be used to make things like tile maps. So we make a tile set of a sprite map, and then we can make tile maps out of all that. And in that way, you really are starting to get into a realm where you are developing entirely 2D games within Unreal Engine. Not the 2D HD look that you might be associating with Unreal, with things like Octopath Traveler, that kind of stuff. Fully 2D games with tile mapping, entirely possible, fully within Unreal Engine. I actually have a introductory course on Paper 2D, as well as a community-made companion plugin called Paper ZD, to get you started with 2D game developments if you're interested in that with Unreal. Now, however, back in my main game development project, we get into the plugin that I think is the biggest deal out of them all. 
which is the gameplay ability system. Another plugin that I've done an entire introductory series on, it does require a little bit of C++ to get the full setup done for it. But once you have that done, it is so powerful. It is a framework that allows you to make gameplay abilities. So right here, I have a handful of gameplay abilities for my player character, for instance. And the neat thing about the gameplay ability system is that it is entirely written with multiplayer in mind. So even though I don't personally plan to do anything with multiplayer, it's entirely written to make that as little effort as possible to make things replicated and network predicted. But even for single player games, it gives you a lot of things to really be happy with. It allows you to easily script out singular abilities inside their own objects, inside their own classes, so that you don't get a massive player character with a absolute boatload of either components or functions or whatever. So here we just have a basic attack animation, which does a bunch of stuff and then waits for stuff. And it comes with a bunch of these task nodes as well so here we can wait until a gameplay event gets sent to this actor and then we move on with the rest of this logic again a lot of async stuff uh comes with the gameplay ability system in broad terms the way that it works is we set up attributes such as these ones right here and those attributes can be manipulated by gameplay effects gameplay effects can do more than just change attributes because an attribute would be maybe your health or your mana but as you can see here i also use strength and piercing damage but you can even make things like your jump height an attribute if you want to be able to drive that with gameplay effects the reason that gameplay effects are so nice instead of just having a float that you add and subtract from is that they can do a handful of different things here we have a duration policy that is infinite so Instead of just adding something once, which would be what it does when we set this to instance, it actually keeps doing this on a certain time period. In this case, 100 times a second is going to heal me by a little bit. If I want that to last for a certain duration, for like 10 seconds, for instance, I also can set this to has duration. And then it takes care of all that for me. It also keeps track of two different versions of your attribute, your base value and your current value. Things that are temporarily boosted with infinite effects or duration effects only usually affect your current value. So that when they are back removed again, the gameplay effect can subtract anything that it gave to you in the first place back to what your base value used to be. Now, if you have 10 different gameplay effects all overlapping with each other, they all take care of adding and subtracting their own values. So you don't get mixed up with keeping track of what your original value was and maybe not being able to revert back to the proper value if you're programming your entire own system based on just adding and subtracting to a single float. Gameplay effects also allow you to set up rules. Sometimes gameplay effects might not allow you to apply them when a actor has a certain tag or has a gameplay effect that has a certain tag. So it is really once you get used to it, especially with the gameplay tag based systems that this works on, is a really designer-friendly way to set up your gameplay interactions with a bunch of individualized abilities and individualized effects. And that can go quite far. For example, I do have a enemy in my game here that if I uh, spawn it in, has a ability that throws a projectile at me. I think it is this one. And once that hits me, it actually gives me like this darkness overlay effect. This is part of a gameplay effect. So as long as this gameplay effect stays on me, I will have this darkness effect. And as long as I have this darkness effect, it will not allow another darkness effect to be applied to me. So if I get hit by one of these now, uh, if you can aim right, and I get hit with another one again, it's not going to reapply this at all because it sees it already has an effect of this type. So it effectively just says, hey, you already are blinded. You already have like the darkness effect. I don't need to do anything. You can even set those to reset the timer if you would prefer, but that's the way that I have it set up. So you can very easily add these visual effects to go along with gameplay effects as well. And that just is quite a lot to it to really dive into it. Again, it does take a little bit of C++ to set up, but only a very tiny amount. You need to set up the initial gameplay ability components on your characters through C++, 
and you need to set up the definitions for your attributes in C++. Everything else for the gameplay ability system, as a matter of fact, is designed to be used with Blueprint because it is a framework that is mostly made to make your life as a game designer easier. Which brings us to the final plugin that I wanted to show you in this video, which is the Scriptable Tools Framework. Technically, as of recording this video, it is still in beta, but it really works quite well. So what you can do here is you get a new editor mode called Scriptable Tools. And here you can select any of the amount of tools that you yourself have made. I've only made one here, which is an enemy placer. So if I click on this, I get exposed some things that I exposed inside of that enemy place a scriptable tool. We'll look into the blueprint here in a moment and I can choose uh, the values for that. So in this case, I made a thing that can spawn enemies for me by just clicking into the map. If I hold control and I scroll, it actually rotates them as well. And I can even set one of the attributes of these enemies by setting this variable. My enemy class has a concept of starting active or starting as inactive and needing to be explicitly activated. I can set that through this scriptable tool thing as well and then once i'm done there we have some new enemies placed so here i have the blueprint that is responsible for that so that is of type scriptable modular behavior tool and that has a couple of different functions here it has on click which does something when well you click this is when we update so this is effectively like the preview mesh that we made with it and then we have a couple of auto-generated functions because I have a couple of create events here. So what you can do is to expose those values. As we saw before, you need to make a property set. And that is a different type of blueprint. And that type of blueprint effectively is just a collection of variables. It is kind of like a data asset in a lot of ways. You usually just kind of put a lot of variables in here. And then you can add that to your scriptable tool here then we save that obviously because we want to be able to read and write to this instance of that property set and then we can add things like single click behavior and i also have adding that hover behavior that's those functions that we just looked at and you bind those to these nodes like this this isn't going to be a full tutorial on scriptable tools because frankly I'm only really getting started with understanding how they work and how to set them up and that kind of stuff. But once I've worked a little bit more with them, you can expect a tutorial for these to also pop up on the channel sometime in the future. For now, though, I just know that this is some really powerful stuff because it lets you effectively script out any editor behavior that you want entirely within Blueprint. So those are five different Unreal Engine plugins that just come with the engine. No need to even download them or take them from like Fab or anything like that. You can get started with them right now if you fire up your engine. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than Impulse Control, Earl Monserville Erno, my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Farias.